All right, so you might have heard of these terms such as let, run, also apply and with, and these are called scope functions. And that's exactly what I want to go over in this video. So let's get started immediately by creating our first let function. And to do that, we will write in our function main, we will start with value string, and that's going to equal, let's just say string because I'm not that creative. And right below we will write value string length, and that's going to equal string dot let. And inside here we are going to type in it, which refers to our string up here, and this one right here. And we are going to call length at the end of that. Then we are going to print line the string length is string length long. So let me explain to you what I just did here. So of course, first we initialize the value of string with this string text of string. And then we created another value of string length, which takes this string value and it calls dot let on it. And what is let? Well, let is a function that takes the object it is invoked upon as the parameter and returns the result of the Lambda expression. That means it uses this as the base and whatever the result of our Lambda expression is, it will assign that value to this part over here. So let's just click on play and see what it does. And you can see string length is six. That is because there are six letters in this string. All right, so that was the first example. Now let me show you another example on how you can actually chain these let functions. So for this example, we're gonna create a var, which is called a, and it's going to have the value of 10. And then right below, we'll do var b, and that's going to equal two. Then we're gonna write a equals a plus two and we are going to call dot let on it. And inside here, we can do a few more calculations. The first calculation we are going to do, will create a parameter of i, and it will equal it plus b. And this requires that we return something, so we will return i just by typing i down here. So it refers to the object of this let function, which is a plus two, and it adds b to it, which is two, and returns i. So i will be assigned to a. So at the moment we have 14 because a plus two is 12, and 12 plus two is 14. So i will be assigned to a as 14. But we can also take this one step further and add another let, which takes this whole part over here, which is 14, and allows us to add even more to it. So let's do it, plus five. And that means in the end, we will have the value of 19 because after having this whole statement that evaluates to 14, we do it one more time. We take this and it refers to this whole section over here and adds five to it. So if we print line A, you will see that we will end up with the value of 19. Great. And up next, we are going to talk about the run function. So a run function executes a block of code and returns its result. So let's get started immediately with another example. We are going to write var sentence, and that's going to equal how are you doing? And we are going to print line this sentence. Then right below, we are going to type in sentence and we are going to equal it to run. So here we can execute a code. And of course, whatever happens at the end of this block of code will be returned and assigned to sentence. So inside here, we will type in value sentence Two, and we will equal that to this gets returned inside the run function. And of course, we will print line a statement in here that also says this gets executed inside the run function. And as you can see, we have this error. That is because we have not returned anything yet. So we should return sentence two. And that will assign sentence two to the original sentence. So then when we print line sentence, it will have changed to sentence two. And if we click on play, you will see it says, how are you doing? Because that's what we decided to print line up here. Then we will refer to sentence and we will create this run block and it will say value sentence two. And this gets returned inside the function. And you may have noticed that that's actually at the bottom and it's not in the order as you see in the block. That is because here we assigned it the value of this string to sentence two, which gets returned to sentence and then printed later. So the only thing that gets run inside here is the print line statement that we created below. So that is the second thing that happens. This gets executed inside the run function and then it returns sentence two and assigns it to sentence and we print line sentence. So we get this final string down here. So let's continue with another example. And this one's going to be an example that combines let and run. So we are going to create a var 
called phrase and that is going to be of type string which is nullable and we're going to assign that to null and then right below we're going to write phrase which is nullable dot let and inside here we want to print line the phrase is phrase and then we are going to add what is known as an elvis operator so the way this elvis operator works as you can see it's just a question mark followed by a colon and that means that it will check if the first statement is null then it will not do anything there and it will execute the second statement so it's kind of like a null check so in case this turns out to be null then we are going to run a different statement so we're going to write run and we are going to assign a new value to phrase and that's going to equal this was printed because the phrase was no, and we should add a space there. And then we'll write print line phrase. So because we know that phrase is null, we are most definitely gonna get this statement printed to us, but I will show you later what happens if we change it with a string. So as you can see, this was printed because the phrase was null and the Elvis operator took care of that. And now if we replace this with a string, so we will write string as always, and we click on play, you will see because this was not null that it said the phrase is phrase, and it printed it down here and it also print lined the phrase which is string so the phrase is string string so that's a pretty cool way you can combine the two all right and i'm going to go over one more of these scope functions in this video and this is the also scope function and let's get started with the example so we will do value numbers and that's going to equal a mutable list of one two and three then right below we can go ahead and say numbers and call dot also and inside here, we will print line the list of elements before adding the new one. And we will just type in it because this is referring to numbers. And then you can also add something to this list. So we're just going to type in add four. And then we can go right below and print line numbers. So the way the Kotlin documentation defined this also function is that when you see also in the code, you can read it as and also do the following with the object. So you write numbers and you also want it to do all of this. And the returned value is going to be this object itself. But let's go ahead and click on play. So you can see right here, the list of elements before adding the new one is one, two, three. And then we have the list printed, which is one, two, three, four. So we managed to do all of that with also. But anyways, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. In the next video, I'm going to be going over apply and with, which are the final two scope functions that we should go over. And yeah, with that being said, I will see you in the next Kotlin tutorial.